everybody. I am out hunting right now, hence the blaze orange. So this week I'm posting a video that I made for the Two Guys and a Cooler YouTube channel. Eric has got an awesome channel over there with a bunch of great recipes and a ton of knowledge about all things charcuterie. And I will drop a link to that channel down in the description. And if you're already a subscriber over there, you've probably seen the video, but I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a like over here as well. So enjoy the video, and if you're out hunting too, stay safe, have the time of your lives, and let's stuff those freezers. Oh, hey everybody. Welcome to Celebrate Sausage. It's Anderson from the Age of Anderson YouTube channel, and since you're all here, I should welcome you to the channel and to the celebration. I'm just heading into Kielbasa Corner, where today I'm making these fiery red hots that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. What are you guys doing in there anyway? a mixed meat sausage, so I'm usually using a combination of beef or preferably venison and pork fat. But you can use all pork or all beef as long as you get the fat content right. Too low and the sausage can be kind of grainy and dry and a little bit tough, and too high and you've got a grease bomb on your hands. With just a few exceptions, I like to use two parts lean to one part pork belly. And this is the fatty ends of the pork belly rather than that leaner center cut. That piece is for making bacon and succulent braises. And this will put the sausage into the kind of 25 to 30% fat content range that I like. Now let's look at the spices for this flaming Frank. And I always go by weight and use the metric system for all of my ingredients because it is more precise than using volumetric measurements like cups and spoons. But I'll do my best to translate as I go and also in the recipe down in the description. So for my 10 pound batch today, I've got 90 grams of plain salt and that's gonna land somewhere between five and six tablespoons and it's about a 2% salt content, which I find to be not too salty nor too bland. This is 11 grams or two teaspoons of pink cure number one. And this has the nitrite that's gonna keep bad bacteria from growing in there and help preserve the sausage and your health. And with a red hot like this, I want the primary flavor to be pepper and I like to use a few kinds of pepper. So here I've got 35 grams or one quarter cup of sweet paprika. Now this isn't bringing any heat to the party, but it is bringing a lot of good pepper flavor to the mix. Now I'm bringing in 20 grams or three tablespoons of coarse ground black pepper. And that has a smidgen of heat to it, but I'm still going for more flavor than heat with this. Here is 10 grams or two tablespoons of crushed red pepper. And different varieties of crushed pepper have different heat levels. This one is fairly mild, but it tastes good and it looks good in the sausage. It's a nice visual indicator that you got a hot one on your hands. Now here's where we get started with some real heat. Now this is 20 grams of cayenne pepper, and that's about three tablespoons. Now good fresh cayenne powder has a respectable amount of burn, and it's suitable for most folks. So if you're gonna be sharing your hot sausage with a lot of people with different levels of tolerance for the hot stuff, you can stop right here and leave out the next pepper I'm gonna add in. And that is a scant two to five grams, or one to two teaspoons, of Carolina Reaper powder. And this one is way off the charts as far as heat goes. For most people, this is just prank level stuff or only meant for internet challenges, but I love this stuff. That being said, 
You've got to respect the inferno because this will light you up like a candle burning at both ends. Whoa, now, just using whoa, the whoa. peppers alone would make a decent sausage, but it would be kind of one note in flavor. So let's add some additional flavors because nobody wants a boring sausage. Some garlic is always going to be great in a spicy smoked sausage. So let's get in here with 10 grams or about one tablespoon of garlic powder. Now if you want a more pungent punch of garlic, crush 5 to 10 cloves of fresh garlic into the mix and that'll get you there. I've got 5 grams or 1 tablespoon of mustard powder here because sausage and mustard are just meant to be together. And I just ground this myself so it is going to have a lot of nice zing. And a little fresh herb is always a good thing. <laughs> So I've got five grams of fresh thyme, and that's a couple of tablespoons. I'm not a fan of dried thyme, but if you like it and you want to put it in there, that's going to be just about one tablespoon. And I'm going to add in 50 grams or one quarter cup of white sugar, just to kind of take the edge off of the spice. It's not going to really make it sweet, but also remember that sugar and smoke really, really love each other. And finally, this is 120 grams of non-fat powdered milk, and that's about a cup and a half. Now, this is a binder that's going to give you a little protein boost, and that's going to help to bind meat together and will help the texture of your sausage out a little, and it's also going to help that meat bind to the casing. Now, I'm going to mix all of my spices together other than the cure because I do like to dissolve that in a little bit of water. And I will shake all these up really well. And then we can get our grind on. Now I've had all my grinder pieces in the freezer for a while along with the meat. It's all a little bit frozen, and that's to help my grinder slice through the meat and fat nice and cleanly, rather than smushing it and pushing it through the plate. And that's going to make a much nicer grind and give your sausage a better texture. time for the arduous process of hand mixing the sausage and I actually did just get a mixer but I haven't had a chance to try that out yet so we'll save that for another recipe and I'm gonna need a little liquid to add some moisture to this and also kind of help move it along and get it through the stuffer and water will work just fine for that but today I wanted to add a little bit of flavor with my liquid so I'm gonna use a nice hoppy beer I'm going to use 12 ounces of this, that's a cup and a half, or around 350 milliliters. And I save just a little bit of that beer back to dissolve the cure. I just like to give it a little bit of a head start. And that'll help it kind of spread around real easy. And then right down in there. And it's hard and painful work at times. But just remember, we're here to make weenies, not be weenies. Huh? So mix and mix and mix until it hurts. And then mix it just a little bit more. Now my fingers are freezing. My forearms are burning. And this is getting really nice and sticky. And that is protein extraction. And that is binder. Oh yeah. Once you get some real good meat webbing going on your fingers, you're pretty much good to go. And now this goes out into the refrigerator overnight to let that cure work its magic. And we'll be back here in the morning to stuff up some sausage. One wiener later. Bright and early on another beautiful sausage Sunday. And it's a cold one outside, but it's already getting hot in here because I'm getting ready to stuff this blazing banger. Now this has been chilling out in the fridge overnight and it's firmed up a bit 
And now is the time when you can snatch up a little nub and fry up a test patty to do a taste test and fine tune your seasoning before you get this into a casing and it's too late. I've only ever used natural hog casings for making smoked sausages of this girth. But today I'm making red hots, not just hots. So I'm using these bright red collagen casings. These are the fine H variety of collagen casings and these are tougher than fresh collagen casings. Those won't hold up in your smoker at all, but they're not as tough as the processed collagen I use for making all my snack sticks. And these are meant to replace natural casings, so I'm excited to see how they do. Now this is a 30 millimeter casing, so I've got my 20 millimeter horn, and using the smaller horn will give you a lot more control over how fast and how full your casing comes off of it. And that's gonna help you steer clear of overstuffing and breakage. And as always, I've got my man Corn Pop here to pop any air bubbles that get trapped in there. Corn Pop was a bad dude. Now let's lock and load and crank out this searing salami. And now it's time to link these up. And this is something I was very curious about when I decided to go with this casing because the fresh collagen casings and the processed collagen casings that I use for making snack sticks don't really link up at all. But since these are meant to replace the natural casings, I'm hoping they'll do a little bit better. Now let's see how these ones do. That these want to come unraveled as well. So maybe this is just a learning curve thing, but if you're planning on using these, at least for the first time, plan on tying off your links. <laughs> it's time for a short room temperature hang here in the sausage closet I got a little fan going here and we're gonna leave them in here for about an hour and what we're trying to do is get the outside of the casing nice and dry and also let the meat and the casing really get to know each other and form a tight bond so we should probably give these guys a little bit of privacy <laughs> These guys are out of the closet. I'm so glad to be here. And into the smoker. And this is a very, very low smoker to start. It's about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And there's no smoke going yet. And I don't have any water down in the water pan. I'm just gonna dry the casings out a little bit more to get them good and thirsty for some smoke. And since these casings are pretty dry already, I'm probably only gonna give them around 45 minutes at this temperature. And then I'll get the smoke going. Now the casings are dry and warm and ready to soak up some moist smoke. So I've brought the temperature up and I got some water down on the water pan and I've started smoking these with some apple wood today. Bringing up the temperature slowly is gonna help with smoke penetration and uniform heating and that's gonna give you a consistent texture all the way through the sausage. You could start smoking these at 130 degrees and bring the temperature up 10 degrees every hour for around four hours. But since like me, my smoker's not very fancy, that would require nearly constant attention. So I prefer a simplified smoke schedule of two hours at 140 degrees, followed by two hours at 150 degrees before I bump the temperature up to 180 to cook them off. Now my four hour smoke time is complete. So let's take a quick peek in here and see how they're looking. Oh yeah, they're still looking nice and fat and juicy. 
They're not wrinkled up at all. They almost look the same as when I put them in there and that is exactly what I'm looking for because that means I haven't lost a bunch of moisture. Now I want to get these finished really quickly to preserve as much of that moisture inside as I can so I can bump this smoker up to 180 degrees and let them cook until they hit 155 internal. But with sausages like these that I'm going to reheat before I eat them, I like to use the water bath. This way I can preserve as much moisture as possible in these guys and keep them nice and plump and juicy. And since the heat transfer is much faster in water than it is out in the air, these are going to finish very quickly in here. So I've got my circulator set to 175, but you don't need one of these rigs to do it. You can just use a pot and a candy thermometer. And I'll stick a probe down in one of these guys. Hey. And these are going to be done when they hit 155 degrees internal. And then I'll get them right out of here and into an ice bath. And it looks like I'm going to need to weigh these down with something. <laughs> Hot, 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 hot! I can't stress enough how important it is to get these guys cooled down quickly. So get them into an ice bath and that's going to stop any carryover cooking that could leave you with a wrinkled up sausage. So I'll leave mine in this ice bath for probably around 10 minutes for a sausage this size and that'll get that core temperature dropping and in this case that'll help you avoid shrinkage. There they are. They look absolutely gorgeous. And the last thing I'm going to do is just let them hang here in the sausage closet to dry off that extra water from the ice bath. And then we are done here. Take a look at these red devils. <laughs> that color is so cool and totally appropriate for a red hot. Now let's take a look inside. Oh yeah, that has got a really nice grain to it. You can see the black pepper and the red pepper, some nice meaty chunks and fatty chunks. This thing looks awesome. Now let's go fire one up and see how we did. <laughs> Check out that bite. Oh yeah. Oh. Now that is a full flavored sausage. It is nice and smoky. You get a ton of great pepper flavor and spice right up front. And then that reaper pepper sneaks up and smacks you square in the mouth. And that is my jam. It's actually not nearly as spicy as it was before it went into the smoker. That fat in here kind of mellows the heat a bit, so you always want to start from a point that's just a little bit spicier than you want your finished sausage to be. Now let's talk about these casings. That color is just awesome and totally appropriate for a red hot. They grilled up really pretty, and they've got a tremendous snap to them. I wasn't sure collagen would be so snappy, but I am sold on these. They're cracking. They're not going to replace my natural casings for everything, but I'll definitely use them again. These are delicious just like this. And they're also going to be fantastic in jambalaya or a seafood boil. They're going to be perfect for pickling, which is a recipe you can find on the channel. They're exactly what I was shooting for. So if you want a good spicy red hot, and whether you like to use natural casings or collagen, or if you like them spicy, or you want to go full on reaper madness, I really hope you try this, and I know you're going to love it. And remember that every day is a good day to celebrate sausage. Thanks for watching. <laughs>